Hey, today's example is going to be a fun one. This was based on a television show that's popular in the U.S. called Mythbusters. And what the Mythbusters decided to do was to see if they could refloat a sunken boat by filling it with ping pong balls. It turns out they could. And one of the things they had to do before they could try to, to refloat the boat was to find out how much water pressure it took to crush a ping pong ball. Now they did their test experimentally. We can do ours, we can calculate the same number. And we're going to treat the ping pong ball as a thin walled pressure vessel. All right? Now the pressure happens to be on the outside rather than the inside, but that's okay. The expression still works. So for uh, dimensions, a ping pong ball is 40 millimeters in diameter and the wall thickness is about half a millimeter. Now these are round numbers, um, basically estimates, so I'll get about the right number. Now if we get a few percent off, that's okay. The density of water, well the density of fresh water is a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. Um, this test was done in salt water uh, on a uh, dock going out into a salt water bay and so the density of salt water is closer to 1,030 kilograms per cubic meter. It's slightly denser because of all the uh, minerals dissolved in it. Now we need an ultimate stress for the uh, plastic. Different plastics have different stress values. It looked to me like 95 megapascals was about right for the plastic that uh, is used to make a ping pong ball. So the pro problem is going to progress in two steps. We're going to find out how much pressure it takes to crush a ping pong ball and then we're going to find out how high a water column it takes to generate that pressure. So let's do the first step now. The stress on a spherical thin wall pressure vessel is, is uh, the pressure times the mean diameter over four times the thickness. Now this is in your book somewhere. So we know, or we're going to know, everything except pressure. That's what we're trying to find out. So let's solve for that. So we get 4 times the thickness times the stress over the mean diameter. All right. Now our mean diameter is the outside diameter minus one wall thickness, not two wall thicknesses. If you subtract two wall thicknesses, you're going to get the inside diameter. So my mean diameter is going to be 40 millimeters minus half a millimeter, 39 and a half millimeters. So let's start putting some numbers in here. Got uh, four is just a number. My wall thickness is 0 0.0005 meters. Now I'm going to work in meters. I'm going to work in the most basic units possible. I find out I mess up less often when I do it that way. Times 95 times 10 to the sixth newton per meter squared, all over my mean diameter, 39 and a half millimeters, so 0.395 meters. That unit, the meters and meters are going to cancel out. I will get newtons per square meter. That's a pressure. That's what I'm looking for. If you work this out, you'll find out you get 4.8101, I believe, megapascals. That's the pressure it takes to crush a ping pong ball if it's got those properties. All right, so let's write that over here. We'll say P max. So I've got to erase my board here. The next thing we're going to need to do is find out what the uh, water column height is to generate that pressure. Okay, well, we know the density of water. We need to know the weight of water per cubic meter. So let's start there. Weight of the water is the density of water times acceleration of gravity. So we're going to get 1,030 kilograms per cubic meter times 9.81 meters per second squared. And if you work that out, you get this funny number. It looks like it's in binary, 10,101 newtons per cubic meter. So we're going to get a kilogram meter per second squared per meter cubed. It's a funny unit, but that's the weight density. All right? 
So that's a good number to know. Let's write that. Uh, oh, let's see. I guess we can leave that there. Next thing we need to know is how tall a water column it takes to generate uh, that pressure right there. Well, we know that every meter of water is going to add 10,101 newtons per square meter of pressure. So x, our distance, is going to be, uh, let's see if I do this right, it's going to be the pressure required, which is 48,101 megapascals, 8,101 times 10 to the 6th newton per meter squared, Oops, let me make that clear, Okay, the pressure required divided by the weight of the water. Okay, now let's take a second and look at the units here. Newtons cancel out, meters squared cancels out with that cube right there, and I'm left with 1 over meters in the denominator. Well, that's going to be the same as putting meters in the numerator. That's the unit I'm looking for. So this, this makes sense. And when I work this out, I get 476.2 meters. That's a lot of water. That's, that's a very deep or very high water column. That's about the crush depth of some submarines. Okay, so that little ping pong ball is surprisingly strong. Now, it's also possible that this cylinder, this sphere, is not perfect. It's got a seam on it. Maybe it'll fail at the seam. Maybe there'll be some kind of buckling. But for this mode of failure, actually compression failure of the material, that's the depth of the water column you need to crush a ping pong ball. So if you wanted, for some reason, to uh, refloat sunken boats using ping pong balls, and assuming you could get them down into the water, they should be able to go pretty far down.